Hi guys and welcome back. This is part 2 of my C++ for game development series and in this video we'll be taking a look at hash include and main. Now this is something really basic and for the vast majority of you this is probably something which you'd already know. But anyways, since this playlist is geared towards everyone so we'll be covering that as well. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions, you can go ahead and join my discord server and if you guys wish to support me, you guys could check out my patron. Link to these will be in the description as well. So first of all, what are preprocessor directives? Before we get into that, first of all, we need to talk about C++ itself. So C++ is a compiled language. So what I mean is there will be a compiler which is going to translate your source code into machine code. None of that really matters for our purposes, so we won't be going into this too much in depth. But just know that this works a little bit differently from other scripting languages such as Python and JavaScript or something, which use interpreters. Now, a preprocessor directive starts with a hash. So, if you start any statement with a hash, it indicates that it's a preprocessor directive and it's an equivalent to text substitution. So what I mean by that is when we actually take examples, I'll elaborate on this. But basically, let's say you do have a preprocessor directive, for example, hash define pi 3.14 or something. Basically, wherever you have pi in the program, it's going to substitute that with 3.14, something like that. So we'll be talking about that with examples anyways. So let's not worry too much about it. And these are the most commonly used ones. We'll be uh, heading into the editor itself and we'll be taking a look. And uh, next up is hash include. This is one which you'll be using in almost every program and every file. So that's the reason we are going to be covering it. So the syntax is fairly simple. If you want to include any standard headers or headers from any of the system directories, so something like your IO stream or something, you would use this syntax or you would use this syntax for your own header files or if you want to open something using a path. So the double quotes represents a string. So that's going to be the path where the header file is. Anyways, we will take a look at examples, so not to worry. And an example will be hash include IO stream as I mentioned and kismet kismet system library so i took this one in particular because for printing strings in unreal we use this one quite a lot so every time you want to call the print string function so that's going to be to print anything on your viewport you would use uh, the print string function from the kismet system library but we'll be going into that in detail later on and what's main for our purposes, we won't really be bothering too much about main, but anyways, I'll just mention what's main. So this is basically like a starting point for a program. Unlike few other languages, it's, it's not going to start executing from line one. Instead, as soon as you run the program, the program will start from, as you guessed it, main. So main is a function which you define. And I know we haven't talked about functions really, but this is something a little more fundamental. So we'll just be going over this and hopefully by the end of the next few parts, you'll have an idea of what we exactly did here. Although for now, it might just look like you're remembering syntax, but should be simple. And it returns an integer return basically refers to the result. So the exit code is what the main function returns. So generally if it returns zero, so if the result of main is zero, you generally say it's a successful exit. Otherwise, uh, you would say it's an unsuccessful exit and there are codes for different sorts of unsuccessful exits and stuff. But none of that really matters as I told you guys. And it can take an argument. So let's say you want to pass in something to the main, you could do that as well. Again, this will be more clear when we talk about functions itself. So that's about it. And uh, now let's actually head into Visual Studio. If you guys haven't installed Visual Studio, uh, make sure you guys do just check out any YouTube video to install Visual Studio according to what you need for Unreal Engine. Basically, once you install Visual Studio 2022 community, 
what you have to do is you have to just uh, select the components the ones you will need are c++ for game development and few others which you will find pretty easily online so once you download it you can follow along the further part of this video and this playlist all right guys so i have opened visual studio 2022 community and you can go ahead and create a new project and if you just type in empty c++ you should find empty project I want you guys to start with that we'll be using for windows but anyways this is just for giving you guys a foundation on how you do stuff in c++ this isn't really representative of how you use c++ in the game engine but this is going to be essential so let's just call this one cpp for game development and you could check this or not doesn't really matter so I'm just going to check it so basically your uh, project file and your dot sln file will be in the same directory shouldn't affect our use case I'm not sure in which directory I stored it but make sure you guys do take a look at that all right so now you should be greeted with something like this and you will see a bunch of stuff here which over time you will get accustomed to but the f the most basic part is creating a file so in unreal or or any other game engine you're using there'll probably be a more elegant way to get boilerplate code and stuff but over here if you want to create a file you would go right click source files add new item that is if you want to create a source file and we'll select dot cpp and we'll just call this one main dot cpp and we'll go ahead and add it now we get an empty file. Now the first thing is hash include. Now why are we using hash include? This is so that we can include other header files. So let's say for example, I have hash include IO stream. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking the contents of IO stream. So all of this, so I can go ahead and select everything. So all of this, and th there are further you know chain of files and stuff so we're, we're not really going to worry about that but we are taking everything in that file and we are pretty much just pasting it right here so that would be equivalent of hash include io stream and now the way you write your main function is type in int main open your parentheses and you would have arguments inside these but since we are not talking about that we'll not get into that so this is the most basic thing you could do in C++. Now, if you were to run the program without this, so let's say you just run this, you would get a build error. So this is how you would run the program. And if you would see, it says something like this, unresolved external symbol main referenced in function something. So what this basically means is you haven't defined your main function because the compiler doesn't know where the starting point of your program is. Now, if I go ahead and run this, you would see that it runs successfully. And if you were to notice, I put these curly braces here. Basically, whatever is inside this curly brace is going to be called when main, fun main is going to be called. So main is a function and as soon as it's called, all the code inside these curly braces will be executed. And if you want to return a result, you use the return keyword. Generally, you just do return zero for main. So that's about it. Now, if I just change this number, you would see that it says exited with code 10. So that's basically what it did. So we'll keep that to zero. Now let's print something to the console, but this is really something which you wouldn't do in a game engine. So you type in std cout and let's say hello world and you would end every statement with a semicolon so if you were to notice i'd put a semicolon over here this is a function this is not a statement so that's the reason we didn't end that with a semicolon we don't end preprocessor directives as well with a semicolon although if you do want a semicolon in your macro or something you could do that we'll talk about that later so as you see we get hello world printed so what is std? std is a namespace. Basically, it's just there to avoid naming conflict. 
we'll talk a little more in depth about namespaces anyways but the actual thing we are doing is c out not std c out if you just type in using namespace std and you just type in c out it's going to automatically assume that you're using the std namespace so anything in the standard c library will be under the namespace std so if i were to run this we get hello world so this is the most basic c++ program you can write and this is basically hash include and main for you guys and everything else in here will follow the general rules of what will apply everywhere else one more thing which i didn't cover is including our own header files which is fairly simple we can go ahead and right click and add a header file here so right click on header files add a header file let's just call it header.h and you may see this hash pragma once this basically means this file will be compiled only once that's what it basically means you need not have that now we can do hash include if we open our double quotes we should get an option for header.h but it need not be a file in this directory let's say for example on my desktop i go ahead and create this so i'll just close this note so i go ahead and create a new text file and i call this one header1.h and i change the extension by going into properties and changing this to .cpp oops or .h rather <laughs> so properties .h so we have something in here and if you were to actually grab your directory to your desktop so if i just enter desktop and if i just drag in the directory so properties again so you would go over here under general so c users your username desktop so if you were to put this as well and if you were to do header1.h this is going to work totally fine as well and just another thing you can go ahead and use forward slashes as well just know that backslash is going to represent an escape sequence in strings so avoid using backslashes use forward slashes as much as possible so that's basically it guys so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys learned something new and if you did make sure guys do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos goodbye